SD-WAN was something that we, um, we spent a long time evaluating and it was really to, to uh, help us in two key areas of our business. The first one was to really help us uh, execute and deliver on our core promise of critical network services about the performance of our networks, uh, the management of them, the, uh, the, available of the availability of the networks and also the security. And then the second thing, is, it's really set us a, a great platform to develop further services that we want to bring into our service portfolio to really, um, to really capitalise on the growing market for critical networks. Arching benefit for us is that really gives the our customers uh, significant control over the network without the without the complexity of managing it themselves, and that comes out through um, really giving visibility of what's happening in the network, which has been something that for years they've really bought telco services, and they've not really had that ability to see what's going on in those networks. Uh, there's also the, the the benefit of being able to really optimise their spend on both bandwidth, uh, which is by seeing how much they're using, how much they really need. Um, and also having their ICT spend really optimised. So less time for their ICT guys setting switches and, and doing a whole lot of complicated stuff and really more about them on customer facing and the more, um, the more exciting and the more value creating parts of their ICT functions. Well, certainly the visibility, as, as, I, as I touched on, just even understanding what's going on in the network. Um, probably a great example was a, a large, um, a large schooling uh, group. Um, they had a, uh, they had some real concerns about the pace at which their bandwidth requirements were changing, and um, and when we asked them what was driving those changes, they they really weren't sure. They just knew they needed they just needed more bandwidth. So when we put in the SD WAN boxes and we started seeing the actual flow of traffic. For the first time they saw at least half their link was being taken up by Facebook and um, iOS updates and iTunes and a whole lot of stuff that the schools probably thought weren't so fundamental to their teaching of kids but, um, but you know getting, getting that visibility was really key and also just, um, just really the schools understanding um, where they did want to start putting their money, did they want to spend more money on, um, on really uh, quite basic functional aspects of ICT or do they want to spend money on helping teachers use smart boards uh, better or being able to um, use their teaching tools or the whiteboards uh, even smarter. So it was really about moving their spend. We spent a lot of time looking at the market for SD-WAN and, and, uh, and there are horses for courses in terms of um, uh, technologies and services. But for us, from a business and mission and life critical, a new arch was a really great choice for us. Um, uh, not only for their um, for the fact that they've got you know, many years of experience through their um, through their, uh, their their ownership structure of Nokia, but also they actually themselves realised they need to be more innovative and nimble and spun off new arch as a very um, adaptable and flexible organisation. So we really get the best of both worlds of of the size and the scope of Nokia, and um, and really driving it through. A really innovative business like ourselves so really for both parties it's really a great win. What they need to do um, is really be committed to wanting to understand um, uh, how or to be open to thinking about changing their views of how they're looking at networks. Uh, we really spend time just in that, in that first stage of understanding what are their challenges um, from a business outcomes perspective and we try to talk less about the technology and talk more about the business outcomes that aren't, aren't occurring. We then go and uh, get in quite an um, interesting and quite an enlightening discovery session where we actually put the device into the network and we actually show them for the first time what's going on in the network and that really, uh, that really opens their eyes to what's happening and then a really interesting um, um, experience where we get a technical guy and the business outcomes guy to start talking about if they could change this, what would it mean for their business and we start really almost workshopping what would be possible and from that stage if there's a, if, if there's a good fit in us as a, uh, as a service provider partner and them as someone willing to change, we look at a sort of three stages. The first is making some immediate changes to the network just to, just to optimise their existing spend because many times they've got some good things in place and we want to optimise what they're spending. The second thing we do is, is we give them a pretty clear 
um, path to make those immediate changes to get a platform that does you know, 67% of what they want to do in that business outcomes. And then the, and then the stage three is about what are the sort of really, uh, what are the more um, complicated and probably more exciting futuristic um, opportunities. We, we then work to sort of phase them into a, a, um, a plan, but also to put some numbers against it so they can get some understanding about at what stage would we want to make that investment. And, and even for when they would be ready to make that investment based on their own capabilities and, and obviously in those first two stages there's a fair bit of work but, it, but those three phases give them a good picture of what, what it takes to get from where they are today to make that first step and then to really get a, a, um, a, a sort of services model that's, that will take them into the future.